Good morning guys, good Bancroft morning to you. Um, I'm heading off today up to the JG Goal quarry. Um, what we're looking for is uh, rare earths. Uh, we're looking for fergusonite, alanite, alanite being the main ore of rare earths. Um, zircon, I've seen some really interesting pictures of zircon on the um, on the Mindat site. Thank you Mr. Adamowitz for that. I'm hoping to to find something equally good, although it's unlikely. Um, and again, today uh, we're into our second day of endless boreal drizzle. So, route to the JG Gold Quarry from Crossroads and Bancroft here. Um, you're going to follow Highway 62 North to Maynooth. So just after passing through Birds Creek, which is just north of Bancroft, you get a turn off on your right here. Uh, you don't want to take this turn off, but this is the Musclow Greenview Road um, leads up to some of the many incredible feldspar mines of the area. McDonald Mine, um, Plunkett Mine, the Watson Mine, uh, all these different mines. They're well known for their peristorite, um, zircon, uranophane, you know, the various gem feldspars and all sorts of other related minerals that you're going to find in these massive feldspar deposits. Um, admittedly, a lot of these mines are no longer accessible, but it certainly speaks well of the region, geologically speaking, um, as having some massive pegmatites. So we're just coming up towards Maynooth, and I thought I just wanted to show you this. I saw it on the side of the highway. Really kind of interesting and really illustrates quite well what was going on here with the feldspar. Um, so it's squeezing up a, a vein and obviously it's taking this greenish rock here, breaking it off in pieces and it's being sort of entrained and moved and trapped within the actual melt that's moving up this, this particular fissure. Actually within the fissures within the greenish rock you can see uh, tremolite or maybe actinolite crystals forming. Um, some real nice little examples, so you would almost imagine that by kind of scouring this area you would indeed find, um, you know, maybe that spot there, wherever you can see the, the fissures, fissures, you'll probably find a fair bit of the, that beautiful sort of crystal, crystal variety. So in Maynooth, we're going to hang a left on the 127 towards Madawaska. Kind of see it right there, it shows you from Maynooth, we're going to go right on whatever road that is, Madawaska Road. Here we come in, there you got your Algonquin Outfitters right there. Coming right into downtown Madawaska, not much of it. Straight across to Major Lake Road, Major Lakes Road. Um, we're going to follow this road, I think it's going to peter out eventually once we get out of town but it's eventually going to lead us to the gold mine. Let's give it a go here. Moose. Big moose footprints. As I always point out, what you find on the track leading to the mine generally represents what's at the mine. We've got white quartz, we've got feldspar, which is both white and pink in color, and as I say, we're hoping for some alanite. Rare to see the quartz in this blackness. So this this uh, big boulder marks the beginning of the mine. Huge lump of quartz. All sorts of little roads leading off as well. Probably worth one day just checking it out. Seeing what's up these little roads. Probably places where they dumped, maybe processed the quartz. This very neatly illustrates the cleavages of a feldspar. Just found it as I was walking along here. The rubble just goes on and on through the woods here. I'm standing basically on top of a very large heap. I'm sure, you know, digging here. Again, you're touching stuff that hasn't been scoured by rock hounds. There's your quartz lined up. That's what they were harvesting. Look at this. This is it, man. This is a significant pegmatite that's been busted into. This is huge piles of debris. Just based on the, the way the rock, the rock is actually fractured and so forth, I'm going to probably devote my efforts down here 
fergusonite, okay, it's a tetragonal mineral, it's tapering, um, often metamict because it's got uh, thorium content, it's got niobium within it, uh, and various rare earth elements. We're also talking alanite, which is your chief ore of, um, of rare earths. Uh, we've got yuxonite, uh, the trash can mineral, as we spoke about it from Quadville. Uh, that's going to be really glossy and shiny, whereas the alanite is going to be platier and of a flatter appearance. Let's see what we can find. I mean, just look at this with the felspar and the mica. Just a perfect representation of a, of a rare earth pegmatite. Um, all along the edges there, massive books of mica everywhere. You can see the, uh, you know, six-sided hexagonal shape. Here's a nice big book we can knock off here. Let's just have a look. Yeah, fair sized piece of mica. I don't particularly want it. I've got better examples. That's your biotite with the iron within it. Uh, you know, we've got the phlogopite, the muscovite, different micas uh, varying in color. This is just a huge, huge opening into the rock. You can see it this way, but as I'm going along the bottom here, I get this really strong smell of urine. Obviously, there are critters that live within uh, the piles of rock. Be careful where you put your hands because you're Probably going to get them nipped if you put them into somebody's home. Guys, look at this. This is a piece of crystal that has been embedded, as you can see, with other pieces of crystal. Look at this sort of conchoidal shattering of the rock. That's quite distinctive. Eh? A lot of times it's a, a fracture um, or a, a breakage that, that indicates the mineral, the type of mineral. You know, of course, this being different from a cleavage, which is a natural parting. This is a a breaking against the, the atom bonds. So I mean you compare this to the Purdy mine and that was a, a pegmatite you know that had things like quartz and all that kind of business feldspar but it seemed deficient in uniqueness you know unusual minerals this has so so much um, it's it's just a phenomenal spot to to search out minerals. That sort of edge there that's pretty distinctive um, of this particular crystal um, the way it slopes down like that and also when you rub the surface this is kind of it's smoothish but a, a little rougher than say mica which has a really um, like a soapy kind of feel to it that's that feels soapy that's mica I'm not sure what you can see of this but there that sort of prism there that's um, that's more or less how the fergusonite looks and there's your classical um, yuxonite right just a cool little stack of mica crystals with a kind of nice edge on them there's a particularly beautiful pearly gray feldspar with a little bit of orange on the edge. So here's your lump gray rare earth minerals uh, along with a bit of mica within the feldspar. Um, there's more right here. It's not really what I'm looking for. You see it's kind of platey. Um, I want to find, um, I'm never happy unless I find a really stunning kind of crystal. Well I'm happy anyway but um, it's not what I would take home unless it's a, an actual well-formed crystal. So the quartz usually forms the core of the pegmatite and here we have the, the transition going to feldspar. Um, so you're going towards the outer edge of the actual fissure that they've tapped. I've seen a lot of this weird kind of mica and kind of strips in the rock. You kind of, normally it's more, um, you know, like uh, hexagonally shaped, you know, stuff like maybe this, right? But there's a lot of this just kind of weird, eh? Like it seems to have square edges. Not sure what's going on there. Again, like what's going on? Like squared off edges. Um, not typically what I'm used to seeing. So that would have been the surface. That's what the guy would have seen in 1943 coming through looking for a pegmatite dike. And of course, that's what's under it. Yeah, 1943, 44, this is what they're after, the quartz, right? When you're looking at the rock wall, you're going to notice the surface material. It's all piled off on the one side of the quarry, and then what's directly come from within the pegmatite is quite close to the wall. you got to be careful, though. A lot of these rocks are loose, so you don't want to be digging away underneath, and suddenly you get beamed in the head with a rock. Guarantee if you were able to extract this you would see that it was actually one single crystal just kind of tell by that edge up there It's typical of the uh, outer edge of the crystal itself 
This location um, is noted for its uh, uterium rich um, alanite, so it's going to be a, a dull platy ore, typically where the feldspar goes from a lighter color to a dull reddish color. So I found some right here. Um, you know, dull is obviously a, a relative term, you know, compared to the uxinite. It's definitely quite dull. Uh, and of course you can see the feldspar is gone, this brick red kind of color. That's what you call your graphic granite, said to have a cuneiform sort of uh, markings on it, as in like ancient script. Uh, that's kind of typical to a pegmatite as well. Um, first piece of this I found. So that's your spot to find the alanite with the feldspars going reddish. I don't know if you can tell by my film, but there's a distinct reddening of the uh, material. Obviously zircons as well darken because of the um, the, uh, the radioactivity. Zircon definitely darkens uh, the material that it's in. Alanite. Not as a crystal, but as a dull platy material in the redder parts of the feldspar. Oh well, um, there's a nice example of alanite. I had hoped to find um, Fergusonite. I guess it's not in the cards, but hey, no deal. I've, I found some interesting stuff and it's a beautiful spot to come to. Just an unbelievably translucent pearly gray feldspar. You can see the surface kind of etched with lines. Really beautiful. Look at that. Here's a little radioactive something. See the halo around it. Um, that's pretty typical of radioactive stuff and there it is. Any thoughts anyone? You can see this sort of yellow halo around it starts orange fades out to yellow. I'm not sure what it would be. Yeah I, I stick with a zircon but maybe I'm not a great expert on radioactives. Two for one deal. On the left you got a little radioactive something and on the right we've got a platy dull maybe I don't know alanite. So when we're talking radioactives like the one I've got here um, crystal whatever that crystal was um, it goes metamict. Uh, in other words, it loses its internal structure. It becomes amorphous within uh, as a result of the radiation and it also stains the rock around it. Um, you can often see that in pegmatites. So, I don't know, it looks resinous and, you know, like sort of a resinous sort of luster. That's quite typical. So here we go again, just tiny little needles. Um, this is obviously, this is one that I've basically hit and broken open so you can see both sides of what I broke open and uh, basically they're just like little spines that are giving off this uh, radiation and hence the color around them the staining of the rock. Incomparable look at this peachy colored feldspar flesh toned almost it's like translucent uh, skin. This is really freaky look at the size of this mica right at the edge of the, the water filled area look at that just solid slab of mica massive. Um, be careful here, you don't want to be picking at the rock. It's ready to come down at any second, right? Uh, so I'm not going any further that way, but wow. So final words. Um, got a handful of little samples here. If you're coming here, I recommend digging. Um, that's where I found my most uh, interesting samples, most diverse samples. People have obviously scoured over the top of everything. It's unlikely you'll find anything too unique looking at the top. But here I am, um, basically in this area here. I've been digging down here and I'm really finding a lot of really interesting stuff. You know, little radioactives, really cool mica sort of setups, you know, you know, mica kind of combinations with the feldspar and the mica, all sorts of random stuff that I didn't expect to find. So I could spend days here, literally. It's so, so interesting and just, I keep trying to get away and as I'm walking out I see something else and Bark Lake absolutely stunning with the mist here so peaceful